Hello and welcome back to Kerbal Seuss Round Plane Reviews. Good morning! It should be afternoon for you. That's of course assuming you're in my time zone, but uh, this is the Phoenix by Sonic Hood 1, or Phoenix Plays Games as they submitted it on my site, and it is supposed to be a... I covered up the description, but it's supposed to be basically a super fast little plane. Don't know if it's supposed to be super maneuverable or, or maneuverable or not, but see, Z fighting? I know what Z fighting is. It bugs me. Um, and clipping also bugs me a little bit, but uh, that actually that actually is kind of cool. Like just the double intake thing. It's just it's weird. All right, let's give it a try. And yeah, I'm actually uh, recording this before school this morning, so hopefully everything goes well, should go well. Action Group 2 is actually... Afterburners on this one. Oh, it's got double engines in here. Are they two of the same kind? I'm guessing it's two Panthers clipped into each other. That's uh, that's what it's looking like from the... Oh wait, no, 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 I miss... Ah, See, I'm used to when it has a two next to it, it meaning there's two engines there and it's a little group. I forgot that... Um, in 1.1, I think it is, or was it 1.0.5 where they did that, where they made it so now the engines will show a little number depending on how many they are. This is very maneuverable. It's a very agile little thing. I like this. Oh shit, that's bad. And everything's fine. <laughs> Thanks to the magic of Kerbal Crash System. Beautiful. But yeah, this is a stock craft, and it just so happens that oh, oh, I see how it's so maneuverable. You got a bunch of little clipped-in, uh, little clipped-in active uh, control surfaces in here. Aha! Uh -huh. You sneaky, sneaky. Looks kind of bad when it's turning. Uh, it's yeah, but oh well. Ah oh, yes, I'm looking at the shadow. The shadows are cool. Looking at shadows while flying. Ah oh, fuck! Not again, really. Well, I was going to show you the action group for um, for turning off the engines, but I turned them off by exploding them, so that's good. Do we have reaction wheels on? Yes, we do. And did I mention it's a stock craft? I think I did, but I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, surprisingly, every craft today is a stock craft. And uh, we're just going to go straight up, turn off the engines, do a little dive, and land it, actually, immediately. Oh my god. I honestly thought I was gonna like crash myself and explode with this maneuver. I mean, it's st well, actually, that wasn't that harsh a landing either. Yeah, that that went surprisingly well. But yeah, this is uh, the Phoenix. I like the wing slope on it. We're gonna crash into the SPH now. <laughs> no, boing. That's great. So next up, we have something ridiculous, and it is a flying sphere by Joey Grigo. Or Greco. I keep wanting to call him Grigo, but it's Greco. Greco. I I can't I can't names very well, but yes, it's a it's a sphere that flies. And uh, I'm guessing if you look at these, it'll uh, look about right. Yep. And yeah, based on what he was saying while he was making it, the har holy shit, that thing just did a little dip to the side on its own. The hardest part about making this thing is not getting KSP physics to work with you, it's getting it to physically resemble a sphere because making a sphere out of nothing but little panels and straight parts and stuff is, as you can imagine, quite difficult. Uh, that said, also apparently taking off is quite difficult because this thing, oh dear, this is, oh my god, the amount of, uh, oh dear, mmm, we broke the runway without breaking the sphere, it's, I think it's trying to absorb reality right now. Now it's a fireworks display. Beautiful. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, I assume it actually will fly if you can get it into the air. Wow. But yeah, this was made as a demonstration that uh, KSP... Fit yeah, it just, it just slides to the side on its own. Uh, this was made as a... Oh god, I should not have... Eh, fuck it. Oh, 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 oh we got into the air! Alright. We have achieved takeoff by using the patented roll maneuver. Oh dear. This is... Oh, this does not have a good thrust to weight ratio for what we're doing. Come on, come on, come on. Pull it together. Alright, we're going up slightly now. Do we have afterburners? I don't know. Yes, we do. Alright, we have afterburners. Everything will be fine now. 
Oh my god, this thing flies ridiculously slow, probably primarily because of the massive amounts of drag and lift in opposing directions and all sorts of forces that are fucking it up. But, um, yeah, this is just proof to show that KSP physics are uh, a bit derpy. Uh, you can just fly anything. However, I imagine if you made this in real life, uh, assuming, well, yeah, th it would also fly, because the amount of fucking thrust we're pouring into this, I mean, you, of course, have to have the intakes actually on the outside, but the amount of thrust we're pouring into this, it's essentially a rocket, a very badly aerodynamic rocket, and my stomach just started hurting for no apparent reason. Let's do a flip. Because we can. And it broke an engine. Oh, yes, yes, no, 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 don't pull up. Let's pummel it into the ground at high speed. Let's see what happens, how much it breaks. Because it was surprisingly durable. Oh my god! Wow! This thing is... Did we even... I mean, I assume we broke the panels on the front. Oh god, I can't see. And it doesn't even look like we broke the panels on the front. We just broke off an engine. And then caused it to start activating whatever this is. <sighs> oh my god. This is great. Next up, something a bit more seriously designed. Oh, cool! It's got the little, it's got a little cockpit in the back. That is so cool. Does a B-52 Strato Fortress actually have that? I think so, but I'm not sure. And also, I love that the wings are actually angled down, and it's got the little outrigger wheels, and it's four wheels, and the shape of it seems right. This definitely looks correct for a B-52, and that makes me happy. Ah, oh, yes, B-52. It's a B-52, it's by Suleiman Sule... You know what? He told me how to pronounce it once, and I completely forgot. Suleiman. Suleiman. And, um, how many parts is this? It's, uh, it sure it'll tell me somewhere. Oh, it, it doesn't here. Okay, wait. There we go. 209 parts. Hmm, that sphere was a few more, but this seems to be lacking a bit more. Also, I kind of forgot to be looking at... Oh, dear, the, 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 the... <laughs> Oh, the cockpit we're, we're sitting in is, uh, maybe not the best one? Just maybe. I, I don't think this should be where it's controlled from. Uh, I don't know if I can particularly do anything about that. Also, these are all a bunch of Mark 1s. I didn't even realize. I thought, I thought it was like, um, some, well, actually, yeah, it makes sense now, but I thought it was like two Mark 3s clipped together, but no, that's not it at all. Of course not. Yeah, my brain can be kind of dumb, kind of often, especially if it's early in the morning like it is, which is my own mistake, I'm sure. But, um, it's a B-52. We're taking off in it. And what I was trying to apologize for there is that, um, there may or may not be some, uh, whatchamacallit, some slight problems with the video, because I forgot to be watching it carefully, and, um, I might have messed up. But I don't think I did, but I might have, and, uh, this thing flies about how I would have expected, although it took off a bit quicker than I expected. Look at that. <laughs> the shadow looks ridiculous, though. Like, the shadow doesn't quite know how things are supposed to be shaped. Oh, oh, it's cause of those, uh, it's cause of the landing gear. For some reason, the landing gear are casting a bigger shadow than, like, the rest of the fuselage in a weird sort of way. And uh, we got that beautiful whatever the heck that is that's going on with the water. Alright, let's do something that this was never meant to do and go straight up with it. Cause I don't think I don't think a B-52 Well, I mean, assuming you got high enough altitude and had enough uh velocity, you might be able to do this. I don't know. I really don't know. I really like the way he's designed this though. Like the he's used clipping in a very beautiful way. Oh, I should probably complete this loop before trying to do more maneuvers, considering our altitude means that I'm probably about to dive into the ocean. Yeah, I'm... It, yep. <laughs> KSP has stopped working. Brilliant. And welcome back. I'm gonna give that B-52 another fly, hopefully not exploding the universe this time. Oh, it's on the runway, apparently. Alright, here goes. And, um... I was about to do time warp, but considering this thing decided to break my computer last time- well, break the game last time I, uh, flew it, I'm not sure that's a good idea. You know what? Let's do it anyhow. Cause, uh, I'm impatient. Let's see if we can get off the ground. There we go. Alright, we're off the ground. We're in the air. Let's do a nice, uh, slow turn. Oh dear. That roll is- I'm rolling the other direction. Okay, let's- 
Time warp back down. Yeah, see, now it can roll. Now it can roll. <laughs> it couldn't roll when I was time warping. It just couldn't take it. Oh dear, yeah, this thing has a... This thing has some yaw and roll issues. Alright. Let's get it pointed roughly at the island runway. I'm, uh, I'm gonna do something really dumb and attempt to uh, land this on the island runway, which is uh, too wide and too short for such an idea. But uh, we're gonna do it anyhow. It's also got a very offset, uh, whatchamacallit, it's got a very offset, uh, th the thing, that nav ball, because the cockpit is very offset. And uh, I'm sure that'll make everything easier. We, we actually have a little uh, drone corn here that I could say uh, control from here. Now we have a uh, much better, oops, that's landing gear. <laughs> now we have a much better uh, idea, possibly, of where we're pointing. And uh, that, might think, that might things make work better. Yeah, I can English this morning. I can really English. Um, I don't know at what point exactly I should turn towards the runway. I know that I should probably actually point a little more this way. I should actually point a, a little more. Come on, let's let's stop rolling. Uh, let's okay. Let's do a little, very subtle roll and a bit of yaw. And just hold it right there. Let it roll itself back out a little bit. Yeah, this thing will uh, try to counter your yaws with a roll. So that's the thing I learned just now. <laughs> to uh, to try and handle that, you need to. Um, which call it roll a little bit before you turn and basically I'm gonna fly this way for a bit because this way I can hopefully um, have enough heads up to uh, roll appropriately and that said now I'm gonna do the stupid thing <laughs> and time warp which immediately dipped our wing and uh, so now that's gonna be fun to recover from especially because we're gonna need to roll we're gonna need to roll pretty soon to uh, turn to go towards the runway so I'm just gonna have us uh, flying kind of uh, at an angle like this, which is probably not the best idea with this design, but uh, yeah, it's a little tricky to fly. All right, all right, we definitely should be turning at this point. So, watch that roll come down on its own. See that? See that? How we're leveling out? That's due to the thing uh, deciding to roll when we pitch. Hmm, we're we're definitely at the wrong angle now. <sighs> The controls are not happy. Alright. Almost managed to turn us. Alright. Yep, okay, we're, we're lined up now as best I can from just eyeballing it. But, uh... Oh, now we're side-slipping quite badly. And, uh... I'm pretty sure the, uh... Mmm, that's not good. Come on, come on. There we go. Okay. Now, we're definitely still coming in at about the wrong angle, but uh, we're going to try to come in anyhow, even though that's not going to go well. Yeah, we definitely need to correct for this. We've gone too far, but uh, there's nothing we can really do for it in this design, especially the way it's behaving. Um, so we're just going to deal with it. All right, I'm just going to yaw to try and... I'm going to yaw and let us be off balance to try and get us lined up better. Essentially, I'm hoping I can kind of come in at this kind of crazy angle and then correct at the last moment. Um, I'm going to bump up the throttle just a bit. This does have thrust reversers, but we don't have action groups set up for the thrust reversers. So that's going to be an issue coming in. Um, we're definitely still coming in at the wrong angle, and this 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 roll is hurting us quite badly, actually. Um, we're coming in at the building on the on the island rather than on the runway so um, I'm just gonna give up on approaching the runway and just kind of try to pull over the island and we're gonna cut the engines and try to land on the uh, on the island let's see what happens if we hit the brakes do we have air brakes doesn't look like it alright I'm gonna cut the thrust entirely and try and just let us very ooh I didn't mean to dip down that low alright we're gonna kinda come in on this we're gonna roll it slightly all right a little bit of a bounce all right but we're losing quite a bit of speed and we're down on the ground properly now to where we are slowing down quite a bit and um, don't try this at home kids <laughs> not with a real b52 
Uh, with this one, it's fine. But uh, with the real one, I have a feeling you'd uh, you'd screw some things up. But yeah, overall, pretty successful landing. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Look at that, beautiful. And with that, I have run out of time since I'm going to try to keep this episode around 15 minutes. Uh, it may end up slightly more, slightly less. Actually, no, no. Let's let's do one little bit more. All right, so that I haven't lied to you, we're going to do part one of two of a submission by Infinix Gaming, who uh, cheated slightly and got two submissions into one, you little jerk. Now, nah, it's the same craft, one version with mods, one version without. We're going to take a quick look at this version with no mods, and it is a pak fa, which is uh, that new Russian design. I was about to say Soviet, but then I'm like, oh yeah, the Soviet was the Soviet's gone a long time ago. <laughs> I need to remember that. Of course, I'm too young to have ever known anything about Soviets, Soviet Russia, or anything. Whoa! Holy shit! I just drifted in a Pakfa. Yeah, everything's fine, I'm sure. Uh, your landing gear a bit too far back, because see, I should be able to be lifting the nose by now, but I can't. Also, uh, the landing gear is just like barely attached in the front. Oh god, that just does not look good. And uh, yeah, I should definitely be able to- there we go! Overstressed landing gear. In fact, the landing gear tended to get overstressed during takeoff and so fall off the runway. I also apologize for the Z fighting, there's not much I can do about it since it only uses stock parts, he says. Yeah, um, actually there is much you can do about it. It's pretty simple, you just uh, offset the things partially. Um, of course, I was about to say, you can see you've done that here, but actually that's just it stressing. Yeah, so, um, You've done a pretty good job of avoiding it, it's just it gets stressed in flight a little bit and that becomes an issue. Ooh, this thing has great roll performance. Not the best pitch performance, but pretty good. And very good roll performance, so it makes it very snappy. You can just suddenly decide, I'm gonna go this way now. Yeah, I like it. I'm gonna take a look at the mod version too. I lied about that because um, there shouldn't be much difference and I also realized that I wouldn't be able to say which episode this plane's in if I didn't look at both of them. But yeah, like I said, definitely you want to put your uh, landing gear farther forward. In fact, on this one, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to move them forward a little bit. Normally, I don't play with people's planes when I uh, do stuff, but just to make this a little easier to take off, and so they don't get overstressed, I'm going to move those forward. Yeah, see, um, your rear landing gear should typically be um, pretty close to your center of mass, actually. So yeah, I'm gonna, oh dear, not that far. Okay, come on, there we go. All right, let's get these about there. And uh, that's about as far as I can do it without it freaking out a little bit. We got a couple armaments. Did the last one have air brakes? I don't remember. This one's Z fighting like crazy. Yeah, whatever you did differently between that one and this one, you messed it up. <laughs> and um, yeah, it has a little flight computer. Um, not that many differences, but a few differences. And, uh, oh, it does have some extra groups. I'm going to also save this as a modified version, so I can uh, put a link to that in the description. All right, here goes. One was something to do with the, the missiles and stuff, which is why... Okay, there we go. We got our AIM-9s. Let's fire those on the runway. Because we won't regret that at all. Oh, and we have a little Vulcan, which is not set to uh, action group fire. But, yeah, you see how I could... Whoops, I did overstress them slightly. I know I said I wasn't going to, but I did overstress them by pulling up a bit too hard too quickly. But yeah. It uh it definitely Come on. Oh, I can't fire these? Oh wait. There we go. <laughs> Straight at the runway. Yeah, that was smart of me. And uh we're not gonna be able to pull out of this. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, your landing gear definitely should be farther forward than even I put them forward. I'll still uh, put the, the modified version out there. And we still have we still have ammo, wherever the ammo's been put. And uh, yeah, just uh, watch out for that kind of stuff. And thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you in space.